Thank you for choosing CTN. And now, it's time with Herman and Sharon. I love you. Thank Hi, you so much for joining us. The reason we're on this set, my mm -hmm. set, is being revamped. Wow. See, I didn't even know that until I came down here well, this honey, morning. If I tell you, you keep me in the dark about if I everything. Tell you everything, I would get in so much trouble. That's true. That's true. But uh, so we're going to be here doing some shows. We have some amazing people. We do. We're going to learn all about them today, aren't uh, we? <laughs> I, I, I know. Uh, they are uh, high profile. Mm -hmm. uh, international speakers. I'm just going to let you go with this because I don't know how far you're going. <laughs> That's right. Are you going to announce their names or does that come later or what? It comes, comes later. I, I thought so. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Who are these people? Dave, don't show them. <laughs> Gee, too late too now. Hard. Yeah, that's right. Don't show them. I just them. won't say their names now. No, 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 no. I, I just want them to watch this. Was the only open road And I swear I heard those shackles snap The moment that I took that path Never one time I look back To the morning I arose Take it up the old way Looking over my shoulder No more No more Hanging on to the past No more Yes, the one guy So I If you watch today, okay, that's the Imperials, and except I have probably the only CD, look at that, can you get a shot of that, Dave, that has all of their autographs. This is worth tons of money. <laughs> right there. See? So if anything ever happens to them, I've got it right there. That's nice. But, like uh, okay, you can tell who you got. Okay, finally. We have Rick Evans and his beautiful wife, Deborah, with us today. Uh, he is, Rick is a senior lead, why did he lead? Senior pastor at Hope Church in Largo, which is right close by. Well, don't tell them that because people <laughs> watching in Washington State, they have no yeah, idea where Largo is. Okay. Goes. He's been in full-time ministry since age 22. That's interesting. He's had an association with large ministries, including Billy Graham, oh, Promise yeah. Keepers, yeah. Harvest Crusades. Red Glory, Imperials for 10 years, I guess. 10 years have been with Imperials. So, um, and then we also have Deborah, who's a teacher, speaker for women's conferences and stuff. So we're privileged to have both of you today. Good Thank you very much. Thank you. Isn't that great? Last, yeah. We talked to you some time ago about your book. You guys are both authors, aren't you? Um, no, she's the author. You, you haven't <laughs> written I haven't a written a book yet. Okay. Deborah, how did you keep him from... <laughs> coming into your territory. She's the writer. <laughs> Do you enjoy writing? This was a difficult book. My book was a difficult story to write. And actually, Rick was kind of my ghostwriter. Okay. He helped me. Worked together. He really see? did. Seriously. He helped me. Yes, absolutely. Now, you, you, the life you went through, just looking at you, no one would believe it. God is a God of miracles. Mm -hmm. Amen. And he certainly... Uh, brought emotional stability to my life. Mm -hmm. And he just, you know, the Bible says that when your mother and your father forsake you, wow. the Lord will take you up. That's right. And God really intervened in my life and has been my daddy for 25, 30 years now and taught me about stability and relationships. That's great. Uh, stay on her, uh, Dave, if you would. Deborah Ever Evans knows, and she shares the way out of a faded fairy tale and the ashes of poverty, abuse, and abandonment to become an international speaker and Bible teacher. Mm -hmm. Wow. Amazing so I, Bible teacher. Amazing Bible teacher. This, my wife knows the Old Testament 
better than most people I know. Wow. She's phenomenal at teaching. That's great. God made the That's Old a gift. It is a gift. Yeah, it is. Yeah. God made the Old Testament very real to me mm -hmm. in a practical way, more so than the New Testament. And the emotional healing that I experienced with the Lord mm -hmm. for a simple scripture, forget the form of things, behold, I do a brand new thing. Mm -hmm. A lot of times in people's lives, they are always looking back, sort of like Lot's wife. Yeah. Women have a tendency, and you know this, mm -hmm. to look back. And God has used the Old Testament. And out of that has been birthed at, at our church, Hope Church, uh, Real Women. Don't you love that name, Hope? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I yes. love the name of the church, Hope yeah. Church. Yes. Yeah. Now, Real Women is, is what? Real Women Doing Real Life. Three, about three years ago, I started with 12 women. God gave me a women's team to facilitate classes on Tuesday evening at seven o'clock. Mm -hmm. And I offer Safe People by Dr. Henry Cloud and Townsend. Ooh. Because women need to understand how to have healthy relationships. We're relational. Mm -hmm. And so I don't think anyone does it better or has written about it more profoundly than Dr. Henry Cloud and Townsend. We've had him on, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And so uh, Safe People and Sherry Keltner is going to facilitate that. And then Boundaries, again, mm -hmm. Henry yeah. Cloud and Townsend, yeah. because women have a hard time saying no. Yeah. And we need to learn how to say no. And we need to learn to set boundaries. And, and so that we're not overstretched and tired. So, so and this, is, this is that... Ministry. Yes. Real encounters. So Real encounters. Right, 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 right there. Okay. It's uh, it's seven different Bible studies all at one night. We yeah. have signups from all around the community wow. now. Hundreds That's of people. Great. I love that. I love that. It's wonderful. So you, this is your thing. Yes. Yes. And 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 you know, pastors need that. Huh. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, because uh, uh, there's a lot of churches where the pastor is the pastor, and that's it. Mm -hmm. But boy, to have a help meet, you know, I mean, that's like a plus plus. I spent 15 years as a consultant because of the, the ministries that I had the privilege to be with. Now, were you helping churches? Yes, I was helping churches and, and major ministries. Mm -hmm. I, mean, the, the, I mean, if I said all the names, they're all the names we know. Right. And I consulted them. Wow. I helped them do what they do better. And you know, the, the, the thing... I don't know how a pastor, leader of a ministry, I don't know how you would do it without the support of a wife. I couldn't mm -hmm. do what I do without Deborah. N yeah. Not just what she does in front of the camera as she teaches or, or, or what she does at the church, but, but That's her gift. the personal yeah. relationship. Yeah. I could not do what I do as a pastor if I didn't have a pastor's wife with me. Wow. Because I would bring in all of that spiritual warfare. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if I have a wife who's not called, Who's not who's not uh, initiated into that? Yeah. I'm bringing all that home. Mm -hmm. I've got to have somebody who can fight the fight with me. You were born in Pasadena, California. Pasadena, California. 19, Rose Bowl, 1959. How, 1959. You do know you, you know more you, about me than I do. Do I, you <laughs> do you know that in 1959, May of 59, mm -hmm. we were married in Buffalo, New York? Really? Yeah. That's right. And I was just a little bitty baby. And just, I thought, and just, I thought we were about the same world. age. Yeah, but, you know, right. you may be just, just a little older just than a, me. Just a tad older. <laughs> but, so, so Pasadena, California, and how the Lord has directed your life, how did that begin out in Pasadena? Because that's kind of a weird place. You know, I was born in Kentucky, and... You know, you, well, can, dude, you can get a, you can you Herman, can get away Kentucky, with a lot. Kentucky's a little bit of a weird place yeah, too. Okay. <laughs> you know what, Pasadena? Back in those days, we lived in a little neighborhood, and and my yeah. uh, my father was a musician, and oh. so I would go with my dad That's to your all. Gene, isn't uh, it? I would go to all of these um, uh, concerts with him, and he played in a quartet. They did southern gospel music, okay. and so I was a kid on front row listening to to these quartet sings, and that's how I learned how to sing. Watching my father play, that's how I learned how to play. And I thought everybody could do that. You just hear music and you just sing your part. You just sit down at the piano and you it's don't know what oh key it's in. You just play. I just thought that everybody could do that. Yeah. Well, I found out later that not everyone could. 
and my father, his favorite very, group. Very few. Mm -hmm. can well, and very few can. And so That's right. I, I don't know that I do it well, but I do it. <laughs> and so uh, somewhere around 10 or 11, my, the, my father's favorite group was a group called the Imperials. And at 10 or 11, he kept telling me that I want, you're going to sing for the Imperials. And he was pushing me that direction. And he wanted me to audition when I was about 17. <laughs> Seriously? So, oh yeah, he he was, he, and he knew he knew Armin, and he knew some of the guys in the group. So mm -hmm. he was pushing for this little seventeen-year-old to, to to uh, to uh, uh, audition for the group. Well, it didn't happen. Somewhere around twenty-six, twenty-seven years old, um, I did get a chance to audition for the group, and and they declined me. I didn't make it. That's a wake-up call. Uh, it was a wake-up call. Yeah. So for the next. That's 30, all right. Elvis was declined. By for a gospel <laughs> he, he tried to get into gospel yep. singing. Yeah. Yep, and he and couldn't do it. They no. told him no. I mean, it, that's yeah. right. So, yeah, so that's you, funny. You, you've, yeah, been that's reject, funny. <laughs> you've been rejected by unbelievable uh, individuals, but does that do anything to motivate you, or do you just kind of say, that's it? You know what? From a very young age, um, I, I had an eye to the Lord. I really wanted what God wanted in my life. Um, mm -hmm. I had seen some of the things that had happened in Christian music. Yeah. And to be quite honest, I wasn't really motivated to be in Christian music. I, I was in it, and I, and I stayed in it. And when I was rejected by the Imperials, I came back home. And in that moment of decision is when I met a guy named Dennis Agajanian, who introduced me to Greg Laurie, who introduced me to Franklin Graham. Oh my God. And so from the moment okay. that I was rejected by the Imperials, the next 20 years of my life took off into so Crusade Evangelism. you. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know what? It's interesting to me, and we've been studying at the church. We've been talking in Exodus about Moses and the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing yeah. at the Red Sea that the very instrument that God used to part the sea to, to, to drive them forward was the same instrument that he used to destroy the enemy. And it really just depends on which side you toggle on. Are you with God or are you against God? Mm -hmm. Well, I learned pretty young, being with God, it's just a lot better to walk on dry ground <laughs> than to try to swim <laughs> with the fishes and the chariots. And so, and so I just stayed with the Lord and, and through and, and traveling with Franklin Graham, being part of Dennis Agajanian's uh, thing, mm -hmm. doing the things with Promise Keepers and the Calvary Chapels, Greg Laurie and all those cats. Um, I saw people getting saved, lives being changed. I saw the power yeah. of the Word of God. And, and so by the time I came back around with the Imperials, they were, they were kind of, it, it, I don't know what the right word is. Their okay. season had changed. Their season they're had more. changed. That's they're, good. They're older. They're older. That's yeah. good. See, let's stay with the season <laughs> thing. Because they're going to they're gonna be here, maybe. <laughs> they're going to say, <laughs> and what did you say? <laughs> I um, want to know how you guys met. Oh, that's a, that's a great story. I was invited to be a keynote speaker in California. Mm -hmm. And Rick. And, and where were you then? Where were you living then? Kentucky. Living? Kentucky. Ah, Lexington. <laughs> wow. And uh, I was invited to be a keynote. And Rick, it was a friend, uh, the ministry, the head of the ministry was a friend to, of Rick's. And he had asked Rick to facilitate the convention. Uh -huh. uh, and so people were there from all over the world. It was fabulous. And so I came in. And I said, how much time, you know, like you do, how mm -hmm. much time do I have? And where's my keyboard player? And so she looked, the wife looked at Rick. The wife of the president of the company. <laughs> looked, Wait, pause. First of all, the president of the company told me they're going to have a women's event. They've got two hours. Anything over that is overtime with the hotel. And it's triple time. Mm. He did not want it to go overtime, so he sent me down to navigate this meeting with Ooh. his wife and Deborah. Mm -hmm. At which point they decided that Deborah was going to pray for everyone who was part of that that ladies' kind of luncheon thing. There's about three thousand, two thousand people there <laughs> for this deal, and she was going to pray for every one of them, one at a time. That's cool. And so I'm sitting there with my little yellow pad and paper, and I'm thinking the president has commissioned me to get a handle on this deal. And so I'll never forget it. <laughs> I'm sitting at the table. And she and there, asked you to play for me. And she asked me to play, and I said, I will not. And he got up and excused himself. Wait a minute. There was a part before that. <laughs> I don't want it to make it sound like I was a prima donna. I was not. I was doing my job. Now, you weren't with the Imperials yet, right? No, I was so not with the Imperials. you didn't have that feel I'm, 
I'm um, with the Imperials. No, I okay. no, I was with Dr. Graham. I had that okay. feeling. So that's that, that that's that humility oh, that's feeling. Even that, that that yeah. Well, I yeah, I was yeah. gonna get, I was getting ready to get humble. <laughs> that's for sure. And so I'm looking at these two ladies, and they're just man, they're Deborah, and 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 they're just excited about what God is gonna do. And I said, excuse me, we have a time limit. We need to be done in two hours. And I start going through it, and I'll never forget her. She just goes, she just goes, oh poo. <laughs> And I said, you know, you haven't changed. I, no, that no, was the, the, the president's, president's wife. wife. Oh, okay. Deborah's looking at me like, okay. you know. Oh, the president's well, wife said that. Yes. Oh, my God. I thought, I thought oh, Deborah, Deborah would have said it. I would have said, look, at, you're the guest here. you got two hours. I knew my place. My, yeah. boss's, my boss's wife said, oh, poo. And I, so I just said, you know what? Thank you very much. Y'all have a nice time. I'm out. And wow. I went back up to the, wow. to the president. I said, I handed him my clipboard. And I said, you need to get a handle on this deal. And uh, your they, wife is they what spent you were about I don't know, they <laughs> spent they spent about seven or ten thousand dollars more. Oh my just, just to hold His the thing wife over. wanted everyone. Did over. you really pray for? Oh, yes. absolutely. Oh, There's yes. places I go and speak, and the and the the head of a ministry will say, "I'd like you to pray for everyone individually. You're their guest." And so, absolutely. And then the following year, they had their fiftieth anniversary. Okay, and they, but you didn't. But you missed. Oh. What what did you think of him? I thought he was arrogant. <laughs> I thought this. Guy, See, that's what I wanted to hear. Yeah. She, he stood I'm from up. from California. Yeah. He stood She's up. She's from Boston. <laughs> he stood up and he dismissed himself. Yes, I and did. then I did it politely. And then she said, <laughs> "Well, I'll have so and so play for you." And I said, "That will be fine." And he did. And he did. And then the following year, I didn't see him again in the entire event. And then Did you ever think of him after that? I thought he was not a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> and and so the following year. They, they, they came to me the following year and they said, look, here's what we want to do. <laughs> she was so powerful. God used her in such an incredible. And, 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 and even, in, even in the moment, I was in the back of the room thinking, this is extraordinary. Wow. But, but my job wasn't to think about extraordinary. My job was to keep a handle on this deal. Yeah. But they said they came about six months later and they said, look, we've never done this, but we want to have the same. We want to have her back. Will you call her? And I'm like, no, I know. I, <laughs> listen, out of any, you could have a stranger call her. It would be better and smarter idea than me calling her. Yeah. So I called her and said, look, uh, Deborah, this is Rick. Um, the, the organization would like to have you come back. Do the same thing again. We'll help you. Did you have to explain you were the guy that walked off? No, she knew oh, who she I was. Knew. Yeah. yeah, and she told me no. And then I called her back again because <laughs> they insisted. And I called her back two or three times. And I and the last conversation we had before she said eventually yes, I said, look, it, I don't know all that. I don't know all that that's happening and what's. But but they're praying about it. They believe God is asking you to come. I'm asking you to pray. And she said, I will pray. She called me a couple of days later and she said, I will come. And that was it. That was all the conversation we had. My pastor said go. Yeah. <laughs> she had to ask her pastor. So then they wow. come out. Uh, she comes out, um, and it's an extraordinary event. God moved in a powerful way. And from that, we became friends. And so we just started talking on the phone. Can and I tell a little tidbit? We became go. We became <laughs> what friends. What am I going to say, no? <laughs> we, <laughs> Live TV. <laughs> we became friends because at that event, I was walking through the breakfast room of the hotel, and I had brought four of the women that worked in my ministry, and I was walking through myself to have breakfast, and Rick was coming toward me. He had just finished breakfast, and he said, could I speak to you for a minute? And I thought to myself, not in your life. <laughs> and I heard the words come out, okay. I, and so I said, but I'm eating. So I kept walking to the table, and well, you have an attitude. <laughs> oh. She's from Boston. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> in Boston has an attitude. Okay, don't get mad at Boston. Okay. Yeah. A lot of love for Boston. And we sat down, and he said to me, I have to ask you a question. It was about ministry. And I answered the question, and then he said, okay, thank you. And off he went. And that was it. I never saw him again. <laughs> now, wh what was that about? Do you remember that? It I remember sitting down for breakfast for a moment. I remember talking about... Um, uh, some ministry context, but I don't remember what it was. I don't. Did you have an attraction? No. Oh no, there was no attraction. You know, let me let me let me let me let me tell you what the attraction was. <laughs> let me tell you what the attraction was. When 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 she spoke, yeah. there's something something happened that I had I had heard about. I'd seen people imitate. I'd seen people try to facilitate. I had never actually seen it 
really happen. When she spoke, I felt God move in a way that I had never seen before. And it was extraordinary and it captivated me. And so, well, and that's so. Your, that's definitely your gift. Oh, when, when she you can say teach. stuff like that, because oh. I've heard yeah. that said before. Yeah, she can teach. Yeah. And, and when she teaches, she's not teaching. She, she, she's, she's communicating so in a in way. in the moment. Oh, very, very in the moment. So after that, we started talking. And, and after we started talking for a couple of years, really. On the phone. You're on the phone. Each other, yeah. Yeah. And, and so she went to her pastor and she said, I'm, I'm thinking about going to California to go on a date with Rick. Can I go? And he said, absolutely. And so she came out and I flew back to Kentucky several months later and asked her pastor to... Um, um, if it would be okay if we got married, and we did, and we are crazy happy. We are. <laughs> and he asked you ridiculously you, happy. And he asked you if you thought that <laughs> I would submit. No, he said, "Do you think you can handle her?" That's it. <laughs> <laughs> you can, submit is a nice biblical term. Yeah, he, yeah. he looked at me, Doctor David Jeffries. I'll never forget it. We were sitting down at the Campbell House having a buffet. And he was eating some kind of potato or something. And he just looked at me and he says, let me ask you something, Rick, just man to man. You think you can handle her? <laughs> <laughs> and I looked at him and I said, absolutely. <laughs> and you know what's interesting about it to me is that, is that the, the, the front, because of who she is, the power that, that she walks in in the Lord, yeah. that is not who she is as a wife. I... I, I, I if I want a cup of coffee, it's in my hand. If I want breakfast, it's made. When I come down from getting ready to go to work, I am met with my breakfast, cup wow. of coffee. What can I do for you today? What do you need? What can I get done? I've never seen anybody. She actually lives what she teaches. Oh, she <laughs> submissive, submissive in the sense because she knows I love her. Wow. She knows, and there's a trust between us in that love. Mm -hmm. And so she feels free. She feels comfortable to, to release herself and that's the way I feel and this is kind of turning into a little marriage seminar no, but, it, it really, but 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 the but the you ought to hold one but huh? the uh, the extraordinary and we have a have few you? times um, the extraordinary thing about a relationship is that what makes it work is our love for him first we both mm -hmm. love yeah. the Lord more than we love each other yeah. it's mm -hmm. about him and and because we yeah. believe this relationship is called by him yeah. how could it ever get out of kilter now there are times that we test the limits and try to take it out of kilter oh, yeah. yeah but yeah. as long as he's Always. the center Oh, yeah. It always comes uh -huh. back to, to balance. Okay, we got about five minutes. You've helped churches, and now you have a church. Yep. And literally, the church that you have, it's almost like ground floor. floor. You're, you're literally starting from scratch, right? Yep. Yes. I mean, it's not like you walked in and go, <coughs> I got 10,000 people or 5,000 or 2,000. I'm walking in. What did you have, 34 left? 30, 30, you remembered our conversation. We had 34 people in the church. You know, the reason I remember church that seats uh, six or 700 people. He's got the best mm -hmm. office. I got to tell you this. He's, <laughs> he's got an office with a full size saddle. Absolutely. Oh, which I've yeah. always wanted in my bedroom. And she says, <laughs> you have got to be kidding me. You know anyway, what? I walked in. I would, not, I, I would not get away with that either. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But okay. So, so now you, I, I, literally, it's a, it's a brand new church. Yeah. How do you do that? You know what? Call a God. Absolutely. That's the only way it happens. So someone called you and said, we need you, I Rick? drove by the church. I looked at the church. I called my friend Rick Sterrett, who's my executive pastor. Okay. I called him on the phone, and I said, tell me about this church. He said, ah, oh, I, I was at that church for a little while. He said, I know one of the board members. I called the board member. I said, what's going on with Hope Church? He said, well, we've got 30 people. We're struggling, but we're, 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 we're thinking about this. And he gave a bunch of options. I called him on the phone. I said, you know what? I, I want to apologize in advance. God is doing something here, and I don't know what it is. Within two weeks, the pastor of the church resigned. With two weeks after that, the board, who had never met me and never heard me preach, never met me, never heard me preach, never met my wife, wow. voted to bring us on as the senior and wow. lead pastors of the church. We came on, and immediately people started getting saved. People started getting restoration in their life, and the church started igniting, and it is igniting. It's 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 it's. And when we're we, hanging on for dear life. Right before we went to Italy in May, right before we went to Italy, God spoke to us in our prayer time and told us, when you come home, I'm going to show you something. And two days, well, we got home on a Wednesday, and Rick had an, an appointment with the board. 
on Friday. Wow. That's how fast it happened. Well, it's funny because I had had you some weeks before the whole Imperial group. Right. We, that's, what, uh, right. that's the clip that we right. just played. Right. And no context to the church at all. No, no. Didn't even nothing. know it was there. And so when I heard uh, Rick Evans, I'm going, they go, you know, the guy that you had on, he's part of the Imperials. And I said, you have got to be kidding. Yeah. I didn't even relate to you as a pastor. Right. The suddenlies of God. Yeah, absolutely. It was the suddenlies of God. We wait sometimes for the Lord. That's a good title for a book. <laughs> we wait. It seems sometimes that we're in the waiting room yeah. forever. But then God moves suddenly. And mm -hmm. that's what Hope Church is. Yeah. Would you share Christ, Deborah? That's your camera right there. Go if into somebody that has experienced and maybe is experiencing what you've gone through. If you're watching us today, and during this holiday season especially, there's people who are depressed. You're thinking about your childhood. You're thinking about maybe your children who are estranged from you. They don't have a relationship with you. Maybe you're going through a divorce or you've been through one. Maybe in your childhood you were emotionally or physically abused or abandoned. There is a way, and his name is Jesus. He is the hope of the world. The Bible says that I have a plan for you, a plan for your life, a plan for good and not for evil. And so God has a plan for your life. You may not know him, but he knows you. He knows the hairs in your head, and he calls your name. And so right now, if you're listening and watching us today, that same God who has caused my mind to be stable Amen. and given me joy and giving me peace in my heart, he'll do that for you today. Wherever you are sitting or standing, or maybe you're cleaning the house, you're a housewife. Maybe you're in business, you're a businessman watching. Just bow your head for a moment and say, Jesus, I am a sinner. I know I'm a sinner. I haven't done things right in my life. I don't know you, but I'm sorry for my sins. And I want to repent right now. And I want to spend eternal life with you. And I want you to come into my heart and change me from the inside out. And if you say that simple prayer in Jesus' name, he will come right where you are and make you another person. He's done it for me and he'll do it for you. God doesn't favor. He doesn't have favorites. If you have children, you don't have favorites. You love them all the same. Give him that opportunity during this holiday season. We love you and God bless you. Great. In the, in the, I didn't know we were going that direction, mm -hmm. <laughs> but he did. Yeah. And somebody watching, your life has been forever changed. Mm -hmm. Dave, I don't know if you because I throw my director curves. Sure. And Dave, I'm going to throw you a curve. Do you have queued up that song on the CD that we opened? Is it possible to bring that back? And we can go out on that. We'll go out on that. Thank you for watching. Yes, there it is. God bless you. Bye-bye. Thanking you for all the days you gave.